Hi everybody and welcome. I am so glad that you're here. Today we're going to be talking about something super important which is the subject of asthma. So you know guys that I suffer from asthma. I have shared with you guys before some remedies for asthma. The aloe vera, you know that there's a whole playlist about aloe vera. And today we're going to be sharing also another home remedy with you guys as well. And there's also for home remedies, there's a playlist for home remedies. And I think that I also share a whole bunch of home remedies also for pain. So I know that in there, there might be some good, good tips and tricks that you can also use. Um, if you hear me a little bit still like um, stuffy, it's because I just had an asthma flare. And thank you everybody because I shared it in my, um, like a week ago that I had the asthma flare and I could not speak. I was, my, uh, my asthma you know, it, it leads you to a spasm so severe of all your bronchi and all your muscles. So when you have a muscle spasm, you cannot, you cannot remove that spasm. So it's very difficult. So I couldn't actually speak. And so I asked for all your prayers and I told you that I was, you know, working on, on myself with all the medications. So I want to share with you some of the medications that I use. What is the asthma? And we're going to go into a little bit of more technical and medical occur because, because I have my medical background uh, as a medical doctor so there's gonna be a, a little things that I might be sharing but of course whenever if you suffer from asthma or somebody that you know so, suffers from asthma please do not use this video as you know a template of what you should be using no please go into your primary care physician your internal medicine doctor or any of your primary pro primary provider so they can check you out because each individual is different and whatever I'm using it might not be the same thing that you're gonna be using and I'm giving you telling you what I do that I supplemented also with some home remedies so I'm gonna share with my super bomb as my sister always says Jolly make me one of your super bombs so I'm gonna share one of my super bombs with you guys today what is it that I use uh, and you can supplement it with that um, you know if it works but some people it might not work and I'm going to tell you also the conventional medicine that I also use whenever I have an asthma flare. I have asthma, chronic asthma since I was born. Um, when I was little I was born with three turns of the umbilical cord in my neck, turn around my neck and because of that my my lungs they never actually fully like expanded and they never actually have been mature like a normal individual so i usually use this thing that is a pig flow meter i use it almost daily sometimes i you know forget about to use it but you know you should you should be using it almost daily to for, to keep track of how is uh, how are your lungs and how are they developing and how everything's working so right. i'm going to put in um over here or over here in the video also um some of the range of how is the peak uh, flow meter so for a normal individual it can go from 400 so you can see that in here there's like different um, values and so it should go from a 400 to a 700 for a normal individual if it actually goes below um, 100 to 80 below the, the normal range so let's say that instead of being 400 you got a 300 you might still be in the normal range so they still have that that um, range that they use so that because some individuals they actually are completely normal um, in their pig flow but uh, for me for asthma I actually am way below I usually range in the 300 to 250 that is my normal for me and we're talking about 400 to 700 so uh, what I do so you can you can move it so i actually move where i want to be my range my range is in that 250 so i put it in that 250 over here to 300 and that's my normal for me and so you're supposed to then take a big inhale and then blow very quickly through here and this will move this little arrow this red red arrow over here will move and it will tell you then where is your 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 peak so when i had my asthma flare i was like in a 100 which was really low because the 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 lethal is 60 so um i was really really low and my asthma flare um as usually happens with asthma patients asthma is you have your your bronchi 
of your lungs, they have a hypersensitivity to certain items and, and certain triggers. It could be then some nuts. I know that I get, whenever I have asthma, I cannot eat too much nuts um, or being around people that smoke or being around pollen. Uh, it can be anything. It can be it's even food for me, food that has um, the right color dye, so artificial colorants that have red, that actually triggers it. There's lots of different things. Stress can trigger as well. So you gotta be very careful um, what you eat, what are your surrounding pollution. If you suffer from asthma, it's not recommended for you to live in the city. It's better to live than in the country where there's lots of trees and pure air because pollution, of course, is gonna trigger it as well. Um, but there's different triggers that can lead you then to asthma. Um, and for the most part, I am asymptomatic because I'm always in the watch to, you know, try to live a healthy lifestyle, even though that every now and then I eat some sweets and cool stuff that should not be eaten. But yeah, for the most part, I try to stay away from it. But whenever you have an asthma flare, as it happened this last week, it is it is completely uncontrollable. It just happens and, and the one is in motion, you just... You just have to try to stop the progression as much as possible. And in my case, I believe it was a viral um, infection. So I have an, a viral upper respiratory infection that everybody gets, like no issue. And most of the time I get an infection, no issue at all. I just recover immediately. But this time, after my viral infection, which was not COVID, I did my testing, everything came out negative. Um, I um, started having that asthma symptoms, which it starts with, in my case, I start feeling like this tingling and like, um, like, like itching, it's an itching sensation. So you're itching, your throat starts itching and like it starts drying out um, right in the back of your throat and then your nose starts getting stuffy and you cannot breathe through your nose and then it, um, it starts like slowly progressing. So what I usually do immediately is I use one of my pumps. So I have this inhaler of albuterol, which albuterol is a beta agonist, which helps you then for the smooth muscle in your, in your um, bronchi, which the smooth muscle around your bronchi, they're going to start doing vasoconstriction. So they're constricting. Literally, when a muscle is constricted, you cannot relax that muscle, especially when it's in an autonomic muscle like your lungs. So you're not, you cannot tell your lung, hey, relax, you know, because when you ha are doing exercise and your muscles are constricting and they're tense, then you uh, have that somatic system. Somatic is, is, the, is the system that you can actually do voluntary action on it. So you can tell, hey, finger move. So that you can control so you can actually try to relax the muscle relax the arm that is giving you some spasm but in the lungs that are surrounded and lined by smooth muscle once they start doing that um basal constriction constricting then you cannot tell them hey relax so they start basal constricting basal constricting and once they constrict completely no air is going to be able then to come in it which is something similar to what happens with anaphylactic shock. So um, the beta medication, this albuterol, which is a beta agonist, it helps then to act on the muscles of your lungs to do that vaso, that, that, not that vasodilation. Vasodilation also helps with, also with this, but it's gonna be the bronchodilation. So it helps you then to do that bronchodilation, so it dilates then the bronchi. So that helps you then to get, that air back again to your lungs because it's able then to expand your lungs so that you can actually then breathe. So I usually carry with this, not usually, most of the time, right? Because sometimes I forget, which I shouldn't, but I carry with this all the time. So if you're an asthmatic patient, you should definitely carry with an inhaler all your time because you never know what could be the trigger that can lead you then to not being able to breathe. And of course, you can, um, uh, since I was at a very early age, and thank God that I have a mom that is an amazing nurse. Shout out to mommy, love you. So she trained me to be to stay calm in the situations that you cannot breathe. So since a very early age, I had to be in the hospital a lot and all that kind of stuff. And so it helped me to have my mom helping me and guiding me to know that even though that I'm 
not getting no air. There's no air coming in. You cannot feel air in the, in the nose. You cannot feel air in your mouth. You literally have very limited air coming in. And another person would panic, but my mom is so amazing. So she helped me then to stay calm because if I panic, I'm gonna do more basal constriction. So you need to stay very calm and try to force your chest to expand even though, because the only thing that you can actually then work on is your chest. Right now in this thing, I can actually try to expand it even though that my bronchi inside, I cannot control it. So I can control this movement of moving my chest, trying to expand my chest. So that was something that I worked on since I was a very early age. And when you get into a specialist, which is a specialist will be a pneumologist that works for your lungs, they can work with you with giving you then some exercises of how to breathe deep so that you can expand your lung cavity. And that's really, really important. That will be a life and death situation, but remaining calm is really important. So. Um, I use this to monitor then how is my, my breathing and how are my lung capacities, right? And then, of course, when I got my asthma flare this week, then immediately I had to start using medication. So um, if I didn't start using medication, this can last the whole month and then progress even worse. So you, you don't, don't want to even get there. So I use a nebulizer. And so you can use the same medication that you're going to be using in the nebulizer, which is the albuterol. In my case, it's a beta agonist albuterol. And I also use a um, ipatropium, which is an anti-muscarinic. So ipatropium uh, is a medication that is going to be blocking the, the, base, the bronchoconstriction. So instead of the bronchoconstriction happening, then you're blocking from that bronchoconstriction to happen. So that helps you then to do that bronchodilation so you can actually breathe again. So I also use that antimuscarinic over here. This is my ipatropium and this is my albuterol. So I have it over here. And this comes together for the nebulizer. And so you just open the bottom, take then your little cap of the medication for the nebulizer. It's gonna be a liquid. Take the liquid, put it inside and then once it's inside, then you close it back again. Then the machine, my case is like this, just turn it on. So it's pretty loud. <laughs> and so you're gonna give you this fumes and you're gonna be just inhaling it, which I prefer that because it also comes in different ways. You can have it in medication, in liquid medication, you can have it also in capsules. So I have used it in capsule before as well. And the capsules are, um, they, it's a little machine which I couldn't find out. Um, a little machine that you just press on it and you inhale the, the capsules um, very quickly. So, um, but I prefer from all of them, I prefer the nebulizer. I find that it actually works more directly into my lungs. I feel it immediately, the effect. And as always, every medication has lots of side effects. So in my case, I get the arrhythmias. So my heart just goes pounding super, super quickly because the beta, this is a beta two receptor. So this beta two receptor, it acts also on your heart rate. So it increases your heart rate, increases also your contractility. It also leads you into having vasodilation, bronchodilation, all kinds of stuff, right? So that's why you also have that headache. Um, I get massive, massive headache, and it's, it's very unlikely for me to be complaining about headaches, but when I get this pounding headache, so I get, um, whenever I, that happens, I just have to lay, and that's what I recommend that whenever you're taking your nebulizer, just lay still in your bed, and that's it. Of course, you don't have that much, uh, you know, air coming in, so might as well just Lay in the bed, you cannot be doing crazy exercises and stuff like that. So yes, just lay still and that's it. Some people get also muscle pain, muscle weakness. Um, so, you know, everybody, there's a whole range of different symptoms. So not because you're using a medication, it means that 
you know, it's not going to be no side effects. So that's why it's important always to avoid triggers. Preventive, preventive medicine is the best medicine. So also another thing that I use um, since I was little is the Bix. I mean, I, mean, I call it Bix, but it's the vaporizing because in Puerto Rico, we always have the brand Bix. So it's this vaporizing chest rub. It has camphor, eucalyptus, menthol. It's really good, right? So that mix of the that eucalyptus and menthol, um, I, I love it. It helps you then to suppress your cough. So you put, I put a little bit in my, uh, around my throat, on my neck. I put it also around my ears. I put a little bit underneath my nose and between my nose and my upper lip. I even put in my feet and I put also in my back as well. Also because whenever you are an asthmatic you in, and you have an asthma flare, you start creating even more mucus, like extra mucus than, than normal. Every individual, we always have mucus around our lungs to clear out any antigens, meaning anything that is in the air that it should not be there. So it gets trapped in the mucus and then we can excrete it out of our body. And that's really cool. So you want to have mucus around your, your bronchi, your lungs. But in a case of asthmatic, whenever you have an asthma flare, then you have a lot of mucus that you're going to be creating. You create also mucus plugs really bad. So that's why it's important also to have expectorant to remove that mucus. So if you have a kid, a baby, like my, I remember my mom when I was little, she would take her, her hand like a little cup like this and then in my back just start tapping me. And so I tell Justin to tap my back or I tap my back as much as I can and in my chest also in the front. So just take your and tap yourself, right? So just tap, tap yourself around the chest area in the back and in the front to remove and expectorate that lungs. But of course, you can also use extra medication. So I also use sometimes like wifenacine. Wifenacine is a good expectorant. Um, and also, because you start creating so much inflammation in the area, um, people that have asthma, we have lots of eosinophils, and so we have lots of inflammation that starts developing in the area. Again, it's a hypersensitivity, hypersensitivity reaction. In our case, it's a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction, like an allergy reaction. So in that case, that inflammation, you want to just decrease the inflammation. So that's why everything that is going to be for removing inflammation is really good. If, of course, there's a trick to it. Not everything. We're going to talk about that. So I use also in last case scenario. I mean, not, like, not last case scenario. I use also as a supplement to everything. I also use some dexamethasone, which is a steroid. And I, I'm just I'm completely out of it. Um, but steroids has lots of side effects. Lots of side effects, okay? Um, because steroid is a immunosuppressant it suppresses your immune system you don't want to be you know trying to trying to tackle something and then you are suppressing your immune system and end up having then another infection with something else so steroids i treat it very cautiously and also i use this sore throat and cough surprise this case it has benzocaine and dextramethorphan and dextramethorphan which is the sepacol um i have used other so any of this chewing things that you can put in your mouth and just, you know, help you then by, by just licking it. It's like a little candy. So this thing, I literally just put it in my mouth and just keep on chewing, chewing, chewing. Because it also has that lidocaine, I think it has. It has benzocaine. So it, ha it helps you then to like numb the throat, right? And so that itchiness that you were feeling, that you always feel like, <coughs> that you're always like, <coughs> that ur urge that you have to cough. Because that's one thing that happened with, with asthma. You start coughing, and there's nobody that can stop you with coughing. It's a dry cough. It's just coughing and coughing nonstop, especially during the night. You just cannot stop coughing. So, uh, and it's your lungs trying to clear out, trying to expand, trying to tell you, hey, you need to remove all these mucus plugs, plugs that are plugging me in. So you keep on coughing, but it hurts so bad. It hurts then your, especially in kids, it hurts so much your chest. And if you cough too much, you can even break some ribs. 
So um, I know that me coughing this week, the, the first few days I was hurting, my back was hurting, um, my head was hurting, everything was hurting. And especially the more you cough, then the more it hurts and it's like, so horrible. And I have a really high threshold for pain. So I cannot imagine this little kids that have suffered from asthma. It's, asthma is really, really bad. So anyways, this definitely helps a lot with trying to numb your throat so that you don't feel that itchiness and eagerness to cough. So really good. And as I was saying about the inflammation, so it's good to have medications that help you put inflammation, but you gotta be very careful because yes. there is what we call the aspirin-induced asthma. So many people, when they have asthma, of course, at the same time that you have asthma because of the coughing and the medication that you're using, you get headaches. And so they start using aspirin or they start using an NSAID, which we know that we have for the NSAIDs. And I know I'm telling all the medications that there are NSAIDs, there are not all of them, right? So we know that we have, we have the, the, because people think that NSAIDs only ibuprofen, but it's not only ibuprofen, it can be indomethacin, it can be ketocoralac, it can be digofenac, it can be then also naproxen, um, midaxoc, there's all kinds of stuff. So you gotta be very careful. Any medications are gonna be then NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication. Um, they they are gonna be blocking. I'm gonna just put the little chart right here, right next to me, while I'm till I'm talking because I know that some people in here might know about medicine and this might help you. So when you use anything that it's going to be an NSAID or aspirin, they're going to be blocking the, the saccharocygenase enzyme, and that enzyme is going to be leading you to blocking then all the prostaglandins. So that's good because that inhibits then that prostaglandin, which leads then to having inflammation by that vasodilation, all that kind of stuff. But by doing that, then that pathway of the arachnidoid pathway, which comes from the phospholipids, I'm getting to too scientific over here. But anyways, that pathway by blocking that side, so you have this, it's like two branches. So you have one branch that's gonna be then for the leukotrienes, which if you have an increase in leukotrienes, that leads you then to bronchoconstriction, not being able to breathe. And then you have another pathway, which is gonna be then for prostaglandins, which is gonna be then for inflammation, prostaglandins. And so if you have this medication, this aspirin, blocking the pathway for the prostaglandins over here, then you end up having too much of the production from the same common pathway, too much of the production of the leukotrienes. So in essence, if you have the aspirin or you have the an NSAID medication in a person that has asthma, you end up making as a side effect of that medication by mistake, but it happens immediately, you start making a lot of those leukotrienes. And the leukotrienes lead you then to a massive bronchoconstriction. And so the person then is gonna be having then their lungs literally doing a muscle spasm and then not being able then to breathe. So that's why we call it asthma-induced aspirin. The patient comes in and they're like, oh, I just recently had an aspirin, now I cannot breathe. And they think that they're just having allergy reaction to aspirin, no, it's that you have asthma and your lungs are already in a state that they're constricted, more normal than any other individual, and now you create an even more constriction than normal. So in any individual, when they get an aspirin, they do get a little constriction of their lungs, and it's, you know, because they have normal lungs, by constricting, it's constricting a little bit, it's not gonna create no, no symptoms at all. But in our case, um, if you have then bronchoconstriction that is severe and then you end up having then even more bronchoconstriction, then no air is coming in and that's when you have really a big, big asthma flare. So if you have an asthma attack, asthma flare, and you are not still out of the woods, which right now I'm not out of the woods because if I were to check, I know that I'm, I will be out of the woods whenever I get to that 300. That is my goal because I know that that's where I usually am. So right now, I'm gonna just do it with you. So what I do is, I take a big inhale through the nose, outside, do it two or three times, and then I do this, so let's do that now. And 
when I got to 251. 251. So I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I'm almost there because, you know, I'm very excited because I was a few days ago in 175, 150. So, woo! That's good. We're still getting, you know, getting better. I had the asthma flare on Tuesday. So, praise be to God that we are getting better. So, I get all of this stuff that I have over here. And then on top of that, I also supplement it with some home remedies. So for the home remedies, we're going to go into first looking outside and harvesting because we need to harvest some of the stuff from the garden. So let's go, you and me together. First up, all the amazing, beautiful um, dandelions. So the dandelions are really good. Oh, we have a beautiful bee over there. So cute. Um, so some people actually have a trigger with the dandelion pollen. So you gotta be careful if you have any allergies or you have sensitivities towards dandelions and stay away from it. I do not, and dandelion is really good as an anti-inflammatory, so I'm definitely gonna be using it for our tea. So just taking the flowers. You can also use the um, leaves of the dandelion, but the flowers have a better effect, so taking the flowers. And as always, be mindful where you're harvesting stuff, because um, some places they use lots of pesticides and chemicals and stuff like that, so you don't want to be harvesting anything that has anything like that and put it in your system because it's not going to help you. You're trying to be as clean as possible, which is another thing that brings me to um, what to avoid also. Triggers can be also um, junk food. So, you know, eating McDonald's, all that kind of stuff has lots of pollutants and chemicals and pesticides and uh, lots of stuff. So, trying to stay away things that have toxins so that is a must and when you get all these cool dandelions they usually like to grow around in the corners of the streets and stuff like that but in here in our lawn because we don't use no chemicals and pesticides in our lawn so you want to check the amazing benefits of clover which clover is really good also then in that video you're going to see then more about what i do for my lawn which in our lawn you can see it all green or all luscious and beautiful, but it's all mixed with lots of what you would call a weed. And for me, it's not a weed. It actually is medicine. And it's really good for not only the environment, the lung itself, the soil, but it also for you. So in here, you can see that in the corner, I actually have some of the dandelions. I'm gonna be taking some of those as well. And I don't have to worry that they might be bad for me because I don't use no chemicals in my soil. So win, win, win. But if you do not have access to some dandelions that you know that it's not gonna be you know, chemical free, then you can also buy it dry at the store. Um, they do sell it in the store completely you know, dry already the flower. So you can just buy little bags of flowers of dandelions and just check that they're chemical free. So now we are in our second spot that we're gonna be harvesting stuff for our super bomb. So we're gonna be also using the spruce tips and I had shared with you guys a video of the amazing benefits of the spruce tips. So you can check the playlist of the spruce trees. And in that playlist, we talk about the spruce trees, how we use also the spruce cones, the process of how the spruce cone grow and all kinds of stuff. And I share with you also some recipes and also lots of you know cool decoration that we did with the spruce uh, because you can use the branches and everything for christmas because they're so majestic and so beautiful we love these trees right so we have the amazing blessing that when we move into this house there was lots of spruce trees in here already and in spring they give you this new growth which is called the spruce tips because it's just the new growth of the tree that is really soft, it's so soft, it's so beautiful. And it will become then an extension of the tree, little, another extension of that branch. So the tips, the little ones, they're really 
soft and they're really packed of a lot of antiviral antimicrobial anti-inflammatory effects so that's what we want so i'm going to be using this putting it also for my check so i'm going to take the ones that are really tiny so i like i like these over here so it's super tiny something super small let me see something super small the ones that are really small the smaller the better they taste more more um like a little bit more sweet but they always have this earthy flavor so but it's gonna be mixed in our bum so you don't have to worry about the flavor because we're gonna be mixing it with lots of different other things so you're not even gonna sense the flavor but you can actually eat this by itself something like this it's small it's cool it's tiny really soft this is good for our chicks so i'm gonna be focusing on taking this you can get something like this also it's just that it might be a little bit more crunchy so because i do eat them you know completely so i like it softer so i'm focusing on stuff that is tiny you gotta be careful where you're gonna be taking them because once you remove them that area that area is not gonna grow an extension it will grow you know the next year when it grows a new spruce tip but that whenever you cut it it's like you're you're pruning the branch so it's not gonna keep on growing that section so that's why you don't take them all i leave some behind now this section over here is full of baby ones. You can see all of this full of baby ones. So this is heaven for me because I can actually use all of these. All of these are really good. a little bit of mint as well so we have some mint here growing in the garden so we just take some pinch of smell of mint take that with us so now we're back and we harvested already some of our beautiful dandelions in spanish diente de leon so this is full of a lot of anti-inflammatory effects and they recently did a study i think i'm gonna put it in the description down below attach it over there and that i was reading um where they took lots of different rats and they checked in the lungs of the rats the effect that the dandelion was going to be having if it worked as a bronchodilator to dilate the lungs and it actually helped the rats to have a bronchodilation and i know that i have used dandelion before for a long time and it actually helps you to to feel better to actually have be able to breathe a little bit and it makes a big difference when actually a person like me that has so little expansion of their lungs to actually get air in to get a little bit of a difference of more air coming into the lungs it makes a huge aware of a difference i mean for many people they're able to run and have no issue and they're able to you know play for a long time and i wish that i could be like that but i get super like dizzy and nauseous and stomach pain and all that kind of stuff it's just because i have less oxygen coming in and also the spruce tips which i mentioned that we have a video already about the spruce tips it has lots of amazing benefits including that the Tamiflu um, in active ingredient, the chikimic acid, that is what we use for when a person has the flu. So you can actually then get that uh, active ingredient it's in here also in the, in, the, in the spruce tips. So really cool. And then also we have the mint, that the mint also has lots of antioxidant effects, which it helps you a lot because remember that we said that we're gonna be having that thickening of the, um, the mucus plugs. So when you have an asthma flare, you start creating lots of mucus, lots of mucus, and that's why you're coughing constantly, constantly to get rid of that mucus and clear out those antigens that you have in your, in your lungs. And so you want to remove all those radicals, which is gonna be lots of toxins that are staying in. So having antioxidants, it helps a lot. So mint is really good, and it also helps you, as a menthol, it helps you also to suppress your cough. So we're gonna take just a few of the leaves of mint, put it in the cup, we already washed all of this, so wash it. I'm taking in here maybe like six of the spruce tips 
and also probably three or four of the flowers for the dandelions and as I mentioned at the beginning check also the aloe vera video because aloe vera is amazing and while I had my asthma flare in all this week I have been taking asthma it's just that the video is long enough already and I have been telling you lots of different tips so I'm not gonna be going into hey this is how you caught it and all this kind of stuff because we have shared already a little information about the benefits of aloe vera so go check the video of aloe vera and all the amazing benefits that it has because aloe vera is fantastic for clearing your lungs so if you have asthma aloe vera is a must must have in your house so it's a lifesaver so that and then we're gonna take also some honey honey is really good you know that honey real honey it has lots of amazing benefits and you know, one of them is going to be there for, you know, helping you for that inflammation. So we want to remove that inflammation. So I'm going to take then a big spoon. Look at that. Woohoo! Big spoon of honey. Big spoon of honey. In those times that I have, um, when I have my asthma flare, like I am getting out of my asthma flare, I try my best not to eat anything that too much sugar or too much flour. Again, you got to check the stuff that it's, it gives you then that that flare, the asthma flare. I know that when I was little, the fruity pebbles, those those cereal, that's pff, deadly, deadly to me. So I never was able to eat any of that or the Lucky Charms, any of that stuff. Too much t toxins, too much colorant, too much stuff. So that's a, you know, so you gotta be very careful and check what is that is leading you to having an asthma attack. And then also ginger powder. So I'm gonna take the, a little, like half a teaspoon of, of ginger powder. If you have the actual ginger root, then you can just cut two or three slices and put it in, really good. So ginger has also a lot of benefits for antioxidant and anti-inflammation as well. So we wanted to suppress that inflammation that we have so that we can actually have, we're able then to bronchodilate. If I'm going to sleep, if I were to go to bed, then I will also actually add also chamomile. But chamomile, because chamomile makes me a little bit more sleepy and it helps me then to just forget that I have that itchiness in my throat and go to bed. And so also I'm gonna be adding a little bit of lemon. So lemon helps a lot with the mucus. And because as we said, if people that have asthma, you create a thick mucus and lots of mucus blocks. You want to get rid of that, so lemon helps you with it. But certain individuals also get asthma attack by lemon. And if you have the actual lemon and not the lemon concentrate like I have in here, it will be best. So, of course, reassess yourself. Check what is it that triggers you because for me, this doesn't trigger me, but maybe another person, the lemon might actually trigger them for more asthma. And now we just mix it up with a little bit of water. And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna heat it. So, so far, recap, what we added in here was some spruce tips, dandelion, mint, ginger, honey, lemon, water, and that is it. Mix it all up. We're gonna be heating it up for two minutes. I'm um, heating it up in the microwave in uh, my beautiful cup. Thank you to Leo's Design that designed this amazing cup. And um, I'm gonna just, then just drink it. I drink this in the morning. I drink this also maybe in the evening sometimes, but at least one time in the morning and one time in the, at night. So two times a day, that will be more than enough. But if you can drink it even more times during the day, even better. I mean, this is all really good. Amazing for the body. So I let it sit. This is what my sister usually calls a super bomb because she also has asthma and whenever she is with me, she's like, Jolly, make one of your super bomb makes that you make <laughs> so that my asthma goes away or whatever it is that she's having. So now you have one of those super bombs that help you then to release that inflammation. So let's go ahead and enjoy it because it actually tastes really, really good. Remember, we put a little honey. This is amazing. It has that 
soury of the lemon and then you also have like that banana light because of the flowers and then that sweetness because of the honey so it is a really enjoyable tea and if you're gonna be going to bed with the chamomile even more sweet and if you have even more of a sweet tooth then you can also add also that uh, star anise because it has a little bit of that um, like spicy hint to it it's not spicy it's just that it's a little bit strong because of the ginger and I put a lot of ginger powder especially for me because I'm already accustomed to ginger but people that are not accustomed to ginger put just a little tiny bit of ginger because it might be too strong for you but I'm gonna go into enjoying this <sighs> enjoy the day enjoy the miracle guys I hope that you enjoyed this video as much as I did. You know that I love talking to you, all of you. I love each and every single one of you. Thank you so much for being part of the community. If you're new to the channel, this is a lifestyle channel. And every single Tuesday, we share something new from home remedies, decor, gardening, do it yourself, lots of tips and tricks, lots of recipes. So there's everything on cat videos those are cat videos because of our cat cordelia so there's lots of different things in here that you can enjoy so if you are looking for a channel that's so awesome like our channel then become part of the community if you enjoy the channel then go ahead and subscribe it's totally totally free go ahead and subscribe to our channel like this video and share it with your friends and family love you guys so much see you again next tuesday bye thank you for watching